Mama Cat. George? Hello, my fellow sniffers. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Picasso. And I kind of have with me a special guest star, but if I show her to you, it's going to make the video really hard, but I'm going to try to do it. Hold on. This is Jersey. She just wants to sit here and be cuddled, so I interrupted that. She's such a good little bird down here, but I don't know why she never wants to be in the video. She gets so restless, and if I let her get restless without sitting here and petting her, then Picasso's for sure gonna leave because he's been chasing her everywhere. But all they really do is walk around this floor and he follows behind her. It's the cutest little thing. Right, Jersey? Today's story is going to be about none other than Hurricane Harvey because it's been mass destruction for so many people I know. But also, I wanna tell you about what happened to Ty my lesser sulfur crested cockatoo and how he took the hurricane. So many of you are asking me this on Parrot Station, under other videos. Even though I always feel like I answer you, I think there's so many different spots that um, I communicate with you guys, so sometimes some of you miss it. I thought it would be a good idea to tell you the story of Hurricane Harvey and tie through my eyes and what it felt like being here in California watching all of this live while my family is struggling in Texas. For those of you who have been following my channel and my story and my posts on Parrot Station, you know that my brother lives in Texas with his girlfriend, Co. He calls Co his wife. I don't know if they went and got married one day, but he always refers to her as his wife. They've been together a very long time, something like nine years now. For sure, I'd love to go to a wedding one day. Hint, hint. My parents also live in Houston, Texas. My dad lives there with my mom, although my mom is not in Houston, Texas right now, but that is where their home base is, and my dad is in fact in Texas and was there for the entire hurricane. So here's how things work in my family. My brother and CO include Ty in absolutely everything. They just recently moved out and got their own place. They were living with my parents for a while. And since my parents weren't there, it was kind of like they were living alone because my parents, as you guys know, are often in Ireland or often here. Finally, they moved out, moved their furniture over there. CEO set it up beautiful. On Friday night, I was at Tracy's house and I get a text from my brother saying, I'm on Periscope. My brother is a huge fan of Periscope. Although I don't know if Periscope completely took off, he believes that there's so much untapped potential in Periscope. So when he goes live, I always follow him and wanna see what he's doing. I'm also his biggest fan and supporter. He's a complete comedian. He's done stand-up over here in Los Angeles. And I just love to watch him and see what he's going to do next. So I logged on and he had a new name, so I'm looking for it, like trying really hard. His name was Nightcrawler. So I'm like, Nightcrawler? Okay. There are six Nightcrawlers. I literally befriended them all until I found my brother online. So if any of you Periscopers are named Nightcrawler, <laughs> I'm your new fan. Finally, I find him. And I see he's kind of driving the town. He's driving through Houston. It's late at night. It seems like he's doing reporting, honestly. Driving down the streets, reporting if there's any debris or damage, engaging kind of like a weatherman how much damage he thinks there's going to be, which I find kind of interesting and people logging on are interested in it. I watch more of his periscope and that's really it. The next day is Saturday and all of the rain starts. And I wanna call my brother and see how things are, but the studio that I'm filming at has no reception at all. Not only that, but it seems like they block every single app except for Facebook and Instagram. Cause I don't know if you guys know, but that is a thing, you can do that. So basically you can hashtag where you are, but you really don't have much communication to the outside world, or at least I didn't. So I really wanna know what's going on and I'm trying to talk to my brother, but I have absolutely no access. Later that night I come home and I see that CEO has logged on to Periscope 
and she's broadcasting. And I guess the reason she's broadcasting is because they ordered the McGregor Mayweather fight on pay-per-view and my brother was out driving and he wanted to be able to see it because he wasn't sure if he could get home. So she's basically periscoping the fight. So I log on and I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, I didn't really have a way to watch the fight. My family's very Irish, so they're very into McGregor. Next thing you know, my brother goes on Periscope again. All the rain has started. So much rain is going on. He's got the phone hooked up to the dash, and I see all this rain, and then he gets out and reports. He's like <laughs> looking at the bayou. Cops are behind him at certain times, so he gets out, and then he films it, and then he has to get back in, but the cop can't reach him, so this has happened a few times. It takes me like a minute, and then I realize, oh my god, Nightcrawler, like his reporting. I'm like, hey, Danny, have you seen the movie Nightcrawler? He's like, of course. Funny enough, I went to school to be the broadcaster, but my brother, no matter what happens, every disaster, he's out reporting to the world. Even when he goes to a different country, it's like he reports, like he brings back these amazing photos and he loves to just report what things really look like in places. So I found all this very interesting. Next thing you know, my brother is walking through five feet of water in some places and two feet of water in other places. CO is logged on to and they're giving each other advice like this is how he's communicating and i'm watching this whole thing and i'm like oh my god at least it's only 15 minute walk for him to get home from what he's saying he gets to his house by the way this is in the middle of the night his house is fine and everything is okay and the reason by the way that he's walking home is because his car could not get through the flood and he knew it. He left it at the local grocery store, which I guess from experience he knew would be safe for the car. And that's when he walked home. So I took care of sharing that video in case anybody else wanted to know what that area looked like. I wanted to give them warnings because keep in mind, that's how people die. A lot of times they are driving and they're not gauging how deep the water is and they're like, eh, I'll make it. And that's when their cars get stuck and that's when their cars get destroyed. I'm not sure that a lot of people had a good gauge of how deep the water was. In fact, in the end of my brother's video, he ran into a few people that were attempting to drive through there and he gave them some good warnings. The next morning, I wake up with a picture from my brother and a text that says, everything I own is gone. He's a comedian, so I didn't know if he is using someone else's photo, if he's making this up. As far as I knew, everything was fine. Like, I really didn't believe it. Even though in the picture, there's water all the way up to like three, four feet, and you can see that things are obviously damaged. You could see that it's a house full of water. But like, to me, this could have been anybody's. I had no idea. So I wake up frantically and I call him. I'm like, are you okay? He's like, yep. I slept in my attic last night. I'm like, what do you mean? I just went to bed with a video of you making it home and now you're in your attic? And he's like, yep, that's exactly what happened. I guess at four or five in the morning, it started flooding in there and he knew he had to go into his attic. And I said, what are you gonna do? Because at this moment, as far as I knew, it was still raining, right? Like if it's five feet of water in your house right now, what if it becomes six, seven, eight feet of water? You're gonna drown and you're gonna die. He said, I was told to stay put. Oh my God. I think fast, I say, go on Periscope. Let me see exactly what's going on. He goes, okay, I'll call you right back. I log on frantically and there he is kind of up in the attic periscoping. And the great thing about this is that I don't think he wanted to leave. Like I think he did want to leave, but because the advice of certain people was to stay, especially since how do you get out? If the whole block is covered in five, six feet of flood, how are you going to get out? Isn't it safer to be on your roof? Is it safer to be in your attic? But then again, is it? Because what if it keeps on raining and the whole house goes under? What if it's like has a sort of tsunami effect? What if you can't get out for days? You haven't eaten and you're freezing and 
God knows what is in the water and it's biting you. Like that was my concern. Once I saw him on Periscope, I saw that the water kind of came up to here on him. And I realized maybe he can get out of this. At least he's able to stand in his house. He goes outside, he opens the front door and I see sunlight. The sunlight is kind of comforting except for the whole block is literally four, five feet deep in water. He's saying, what should I do guys? My logic was if you're standing now, it's sunny out and it's not currently raining and it's due to rain until Wednesday, get out of there now. My dad's house was fine. So in my head, if he was able to get to my father's place, he could eat, he could shower, he could finally be all right. Cause not every house flooded there, but the majority of houses do. And I should clarify something for you guys. Although you can't predict which homes are gonna flood, there are some homes that kind of never flood or haven't flooded in 60 years. And there's some areas that have had four floods in five years. So a lot of people can gauge a little bit or guesstimate or have already raised their homes. So they kind of know what is going to happen. So that's why some people don't exactly evacuate. The reason my brother went to his place he had every intention of going to my father's place that night, except he could not get into my dad's area. That place was blocked off by flooding, but his house on the one side that it was on didn't flood at all. So my brother knew he couldn't get there with the car. The closest place he could get to was that grocery store and walk to his house. Two good things came from that. The first thing was that because of the McGregor fight, Danny and CO ordered it on pay-per-view at my dad's house so they could watch it with dad. But before they left, CO thought to take Ty. I spoke to CO about this and CO said, I didn't want to take Ty because it was raining and I didn't really want to disrupt his comfort and bring him out in the rain and I was worried about that. But then I thought, what if we can't get back home tonight and I really don't want to put Ty to bed so early because it would be 8.30 and usually he goes to bed at 10. So I decided to bring him. That was the best decision she could have made. If Ty hadn't gone to watch the McGregor fight with CO over to my dad's, I don't know what would have happened. I believe he would have survived because my brother obviously would have taken him up to the attic with him, but I think the rescue would have been a lot more difficult and a lot harder. I think it's pretty amazing that Ty was over there. Ty went to bed early that night, she said. So he wasn't too disturbed by the rain for him. It was just another day of rain. You know, it rains in Texas. And in the morning when he woke up, it was just, again, another day of rain. So in the meantime, Ty, CO, and my dad are all fine. Meanwhile, my brother has just opened the door to his whole block underwater and he's asking us on Periscope what to do. I'm saying leave. It looks like you can stand, it's sunny outside, you could get to dad's, you could get some food, you could get some water and you can have a good shower. My brother was worried because either my dad or CEO told him maybe you should stay and be safe. That was before they had really seen and assessed the situation. There was somebody else on Periscope that said, yeah man, leave. And I think because everyone was saying leave, my brother got encouraged. Once he got on camera and opened the door, his spirits had changed. He became like happy to be reporting, worried about other people. He opened the door and he saw people on a roof with a dog and suddenly everything was different for him. I could see it in him. He was like, wait a minute, I can swim, I'm strong, there are other people that need help and he heard people calling for help. And I could hear people calling for help through the Periscope live video. And then my brother says, hey man, is everything okay? What do you need? He told me that there was a boat going around and I'm like, yes, that's amazing. Maybe somebody will help you get out of there. And he's like, no Marlene, let the boat help other people get out of there. I'm gonna walk out of here. On camera, somebody advises him 
to get a garbage bag to put his stuff in because he has to carry Sio's purse and a few other things and he starts trying to leave. We're watching him walk through all of this water and then he says, guys, it's too deep. I gotta go. Now I'm frantic. Do you guys really want to know the honest truth of what I had to do that day? It was my sister's birthday the day after. We didn't want to celebrate it on Saturday, on Sunday. We had all these plans to go to the dog beach. That's what my sister wants to do every year. She loves the dog. She loves the dog beach. She wants to see the dogs happy. Like I'm Cinderella with the bird. She's like the same girl, but with the dogs. So we always go to the dog beach. She comes home in the morning. I'm like, have you seen what's going on with Danny? She's like, no, what? Now I have to be brave for my brother. At least I think I do. I'm sure he's fine. But I also have to like be the big sister and be like, yes, let's go to the beach for your birthday. Of course, there's not really anything I can do for my brother from here. But I did not stop watching him for one second. When we got there, I would go up, try to get reception, contact CEO, contact Danny, contact dad, contact every single person. I've always been kind of like mother hen. I don't know why, that's just how I am with my siblings. I need to know that everything is okay. So I'm following this story in the car, everywhere. Every second that I'm out of touch with my brother, I'm freaking out and silently crying. We get in the car and the last I see of my brother is he's walking through these waters and they get way too deep, so deep, that that he can't go anymore. I don't know the area. I don't know anything about what's about to happen. I call my dad. Dad, what's going on? Is everything okay? He's like, eh, yes, everything is okay. Uh, Danny, I got to go. He's on the periscope. I'm like, oh, I gotta go then too. I gotta watch it. It's not on periscope. I don't know what dad's talking about. Can't find him. Well, there he is on Facebook and he's being rescued on a boat. And that was the moment I realized how deep it was. This is like a boat with a motor going through the streets of Houston, Texas. It's insane. And there's a surfer in the back. I have to take a moment to tell you what I know about these kids because my brother told me that he was able to find out some details about them. They're a group of kids that I call the Hurricane Harvey heroes. From what I can gauge, I think it seems like most of them are brothers. They lived in the area. They knew how bad it floods. I hope I have this story right. And the day before they drove to Galveston, Texas, which is kind of like the shore that they must have a beach house or something and they got their boat and drove it back just to help people the next morning because they knew that their help was going to be needed these kids saved everyone i'm not kidding you it seemed like the entire community got a chance to get off their roofs and on their boat at some point they saved families they saved elderly they saved kids babies. I saw them save dogs and rabbits at one point. These kids brought everything and anyone that they could to safe ground, which was at Kroger, which is the grocery store in Texas. So I think that these kids deserve a lot of recognition, let me just say. Next thing you know, I see my brother on their boat and the title of his story says, been rescued. And I'm like in the car, like, I'm so happy my brother's okay. And I know that he's gonna be okay because I know he's strong, but I've missed every hurricane in Houston. I've never been in one. So I don't know, you know, how bad they get. I don't know that he's gonna go out and like put his life on the line to help others because that's how he is and get himself in dangerous situations, especially if there's like a bird somewhere or something, you know? So I knew he was probably gonna be sad when he goes back home. I just had this feeling and I've tried to tell him, hey, Danny, I know that you're kind of in good spirits now because you're in the middle of everything. I just wanna let you know, don't be sad when you go home because I can always feel him. And I just knew what it's gonna feel like for him because I feel like sometimes we're the same type of person. And um, that's how I would feel. Honestly, I'm sure that's how everybody feels in this situation. You see so many people at the end of these hurricanes just outside of their houses throwing stuff. It looks like a house is being gutted. Every piece of furniture they own is now on the side of the street. That's what happens after these hurricanes. When I first called, my dad to see who's okay. I'm like, where's Danny? Where's CEO? 
CO's fine. The bird is with CO. The dogs are fine. My dad is fine. My mom is in Ireland. And uh, Danny, I'm hoping, is going to be fine. So the next thing I know, I'm on the beach and all I want to do is go up to find out how my brother is. I just kept calling my brother and my brother's girl and Danny didn't answer. And I didn't know like where he had been or if he was okay or if he got home when my brother went live on facebook and he had his rescue my other friend sarah had seen where he was and said go to my brother david's house you're in that area and they have food and you can shower and you'll be safe that was the last i heard and my brother didn't seem to be able to get any phone calls after that and where I was, my phone wasn't going through at all. So I kept trying and trying to call him. I was basically, everyone was on the beach and there I was up top trying to get reception, frantically calling him, trying to see who had any info with him in the last 10 minutes. I call CO and our calls keep dropping. Finally, I find a way to call her through going to some Wi-Fi and she answers and I say, what are you doing? She's like, I'm watching the kids outside play in the water. It's Sunday, there was already the flood. I guess kids brought out kind of like the boogie boards. And I say, oh, that's interesting. I never thought that they could kind of play in that water. Take some video for me. And I hear Ty on her shoulder. And Ty is going, pretty baby birdie, pretty baby birdie. I'm like, oh my God, I hear Ty. He's in pretty good spirits. And she's like, yeah, I'm outside with him. We're watching the neighborhood. And suddenly, while I'm on the phone, and of course I have so much anxiety, like where is my brother? Nobody has heard from him. I hear Ty screaming and he goes, Danny, Danny, Danny. And I'm like, CO, now he's frantic. He misses Danny. She goes, I know, I know, I think he does. And suddenly Danny walks through the door. The bird had seen Danny before anybody recognized that it was him and knew that Danny was coming. How did Danny get home? Danny went to his friend David's house. They had food, they had water, he showered. And there was, I think from what I understand, a group of people there. But he wasn't able to leave David's house because that house was also flooded in. So I'm not sure if there was damage into the house, but you couldn't get out of that area. My dad called a friend and the friend had, I guess, a high rise truck or van or Jeep. And he drove through the floods, picked up my brother and brought him home. I guess the moment that he was in the van, Ty saw him. So I was on the phone when my brother walked through the door and I said, uh, just call me back when you can. I want to know how everything is. I'm pretty sure you need your time now to shower and do whatever it is you need to do. And then CO filled me in on the rest. What happened was the dog Diesel, we have two dogs there. This dog Diesel is a Sharanian, which is half Pomeranian and half Shih Tzu. Diesel would not leave my brother's side. Neither would Ty. They were glued to him. Now you have to keep in mind, Ty is recently in the last, uh, I guess, whole years of my brother and CO's relationship, been in love with CO. And of course he loves my brother as well, but he would not leave my brother alone. And apparently the dog and bird were fighting for my brother's attention and both of them were blocking each other from my brother. My brother was like, wow, these animals are exceptionally intuitive. It's almost like they could understand the energy that I was missing. So that was very interesting. Now, of course, my brother and CO could not go home. First of all, they have to now live back in my parents' house, but they obviously can't get home because it's flooded everywhere. There's nothing to do. You have to wait a few days, wait till all the water recedes, and then when it's safe, you go back and pull all your stuff out and put it on the lawn. That's pretty much the protocol. So they were all cooped up in my dad's house for a few days. And CO said that Ty was insane. She said, Ty doesn't usually scream unless he wants something. But if he's in eyes view of you, he's always happy. And if he wants something, they give it to Ty and he's fine. But for the last few days, Ty has been unconsolable. 
He's been screaming his head off and he hasn't been a normal bird at all. So it's been really stressful for them because anybody who knows how a lesser sulfur crested cockatoo sounds, you know that that is not the voice you wanna be hearing all day, especially not paired with an insane amount of anxiety that the bird is obviously feeling. My brother called me today and he said, you know what, Ty is so on edge that Co and I are going to take him back to the house. We think he wants to go home, but we think he needs to understand why we're not going home. That's how birds are, that's how smart they are, and that's how you have to treat them. Now, of course, the water has receded, so there's really no danger in taking him down there. My brother said he took Ty down there, and Ty was looking all around, analyzing everything, and all he wanted to do was go to his cage. So my brother let him on the top of his cage for a little bit just to see. It was only like the bottom that got flooded. Later on, my brother took the cage outside, hosed it off. Ty has two cages and a stand at my brother's house and two cages and a stand at my dad's house. So. He was doing quite okay, except he had a lot of anxiety after the storm. And obviously by how he was screaming for my brother when he saw him, he had a lot of anxiety while my brother was gone and he probably sensed that that is what's happening. So that whole time that I couldn't get in touch with my brother, I was really worried and really sad. I think the most impressive parts of this story is the power of social media, one, because here my brother goes live on Facebook and because of that, our friend says, I know where you are, you can go to my brother's house. So he was able to get to safety because of that. Because let's face it, even though you're okay, your water is up to here. It's poisonous, there's alligators, there's snakes, there's fire ants, there's so many things that can happen to you. And it's important to be able to get to safety. So because of Facebook and him going live, he was able to get to a nice safe place. Because of Facebook, so many other people were able to help one another and come together and make groups and chats and locate who needs help, who needs the truck, who needs medical attention. People were remembering addresses of other people and posting them on Facebook. They were alerting anybody they knew with boats and vans and trucks that could possibly save people. It was really a group effort to get every single person home. I know that already 39 people have died in Hurricane Harvey, but in the mass destruction, of what Hurricane Harvey has done. That's an impressively low number. And I think a lot of it is attributed to social media and how we're all able to communicate and get ourselves out there and help one another. So that was one amazing thing. And also thank God for the McGregor fight because if it wasn't for the McGregor fight, Ty would not be at my dad's and Seal would not be at my dad's. And so they were all safe because let's face it, I think it would have been a lot harder for them to do with the bird and a lot harder for Seal. Because I know it would have been hard for me to go through something like that. So there are little miracles that happen everywhere. So those are the little miracles that happen every single day. And I'm really happy that in the grand scheme of things, everybody is okay. It's going to be a lot to put that city back together, but out of all the communities in the world, I think Texas can do it. Honestly, I think it's such a great, helpful state. So that is my story time Sunday. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I hope this filled in a little bit for you about Ty and where he is and if he is okay. That's basically my perspective of the story. Hopefully for whatever Wednesday this week, I'll have something together about the hurricane from my brother's entire point of view. I've been working on it and it looks like a really, really good story to really feel what it feels like to be in the middle of the hurricane and the destruction. So if you're interested in something like that, please tune in on Wednesday. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe. We love new subscribers. And please come and join Parrot Station. That is my Facebook group where I can see your birds and hear about your stories. Thank you guys so much. Follow me on Instagram if you would like to know more 
and see my birdies. I hope everybody affected by Hurricane Harvey is doing okay. Drop me a note, let me know what your experience was, and of course, if your birdie is okay. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Bye.